something very exciting happens in Delaware during the last week of July. It's not a beach party, it's not a ball game, and it's not our family vacation. Can you guess? That's right, it's Delaware State Fair time, a place where memories are made. Good afternoon. My name is Macy Carter. I'm 11 years old and a member of the Peach Blossom 4-H Club. These fair memories have been made for generations by people like my mom, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, and even my great-great-grandmother. This special place where memories are made actually started out as an idea in 1919 around a potbelly stove in the Harrington Railroad Station. On July 27, 1920, these meetings resulted in the creation of the first in Kent and Sussex County Fair. The main focus was on agriculture. The fair lasted for four days and was held on 30 acres. My great-grandfather recalls the entry fee as a mere 50 cents. My great-grandmother remembers when parking was closer and more locals attended the fair. The name changed to Delaware State Fair in 1962 to reflect its growing popularity throughout the state and region. Today, the fairgrounds encompass over 300 <coughs> acres and features concerts, rodeos, ag exhibits, a carnival, demonstrations, and other fair events. The fair now lasts for 10 days. The attendance reaches over 300,000 each summer, and in 2012, there were 11,222 exhibits in the 4-H department alone. This year, the adult admission fee is going to be $8, and the parking spans several acres. <coughs> there are thousands shuttled in each day. Fair goers will visit from surrounding states to experience all the attractions the fair has to offer. There are many memories that our family has passed down about the fair. My grandfather, I remember sleeping on a cot in the cow barn. My grandmother remembers riding in the livestock parade as Dairy Princess, fair petting zoo for over 10 years. My uncle remembers giving a 4-H demonstration when his cow kicked over his posters and made a cow pie. My <coughs> aunt's favorite memory of the fair is dressing up as an ice cream cone for the pretty animal contest. My parents have fond memories of showing their animals at the fair too but the barns are no longer there. They have been replaced by more modern, more spacious barns with concrete floors and excellent lighting. When the fair first opened, the main entertainment was harness racing. Today, the Delaware State Fair draws in crowds from other states such as Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Maryland. It attracts many popular acts to Delmarva. Among them are Carrie Underwood, Kelly Clarkson, and Bill Cosby. My mom remembers how excited she was when new kids on the block came to the fair, but her favorite act was always the country group Alabama. My grandmother remembers her favorite entertainment as Charlie Pride. Our family has created generations of memories at the Delaware State Fair. Some of my favorite memories are showing my grand champion goat, getting my picture taken with Governor Jack Markell, getting up early to wash my cow, and water balloon fights outside the cow barn. I'm sure many of you 4-H'ers have a special memory of the State Fair, too. If not, I recommend that you check out the special Delaware tradition where memories are made. Thank you. It could be the striking red, sporty Mustang, or a cowgirl's dream, a monstrous 4x4 white dually, turbo exhaust fully loaded and complete with a Texas hauler body. And let's not forget the importance of horsepower, stylish rims, and no vehicle is complete without a sound system that will wake up the neighbors every morning when you use your auto start to pre-warm your car. But did any of us ever stop to think, what truly is the most important part? What do we need for the wheels to spin round, for the sound system to turn on, and for all those fancy features to come to life? because there's one single item that the entire vehicle is built around. That without it, the rest of the truck is useless. Does anyone ever think to ask the salesperson as you're going over the options, um, sir, what kind of battery does the vehicle have? 
I doubt that question ever came up. But I mean, it is the most important part. You can't even listen to the radio in the driveway, let alone drive around town for everyone to see without it. People often do not think of the battery as important. But in reality, the battery is the most important part. For the battery is what makes that engine start. It kind of goes along with getting every new toy you ever wanted for your birthday, only to read the batteries not included notice on the package that apparently your parents forgot to read too because they didn't buy any batteries. Many times in our lives, we overlook the most important parts as we get caught up in the shiny outer surfaces and fancy options of all we are being offered. Many times, we forget the foundation of our world that our society has been built around. Many times, we forget or take for granted the very industry that is the battery to the world. The one industry that without it, none of the others can exist. Agriculture. Agriculture, much like the battery of a car, is often overlooked. But yet farmers are directly connected to more than 24 million U.S. jobs in all kinds of industries. And it's the one industry that 100% of our population is dependent upon for its survival. What other industry can say that? I've heard some people say that we no longer need the United States agricultural industry. We can just import what we need from other countries. This is what has happened to some productions, such as the production of televisions, clothing, computers, and furniture. We have allowed those jobs to disappear from the U.S. and go to other countries who have no minimum wage, no child labor laws, and that are without many of the inspection processes that we have in the United States businesses. When it comes to food, is this really a commodity you want to import from another country? We see how that's working out with gas. In 1969, gas was 35 cents <coughs> per gallon. I filled up just the other day at 3.50 a gallon. That's an increase of 1,000% in a little over 40 years. And recent news said, the worst is yet to come. We can cut back and even live without fuel. But can you live without food? Some countries rely primarily on food imports to feed their people. Countries like Nigeria, Morocco, and Haiti. These countries face issues of chronic hunger and starvation every day because they do not have the money or the goods to trade for enough food for their survival. In reality, it is American agriculture that gives us the advantage when trading in foreign markets. How people can go to the store buy food, buy nice warm cotton and wool clothes, and drive them in their car on a full tank of ethanol 85, and say we no longer need the United States agricultural industry? To them I say, don't speak with your mouth full. Did you know that today's American farmer feeds twice as many people as his, as his parents did, using less land, water, energy, and fewer emissions? Fact is, to keep up with the population growth of over 150,000 people every day, more food will have to be produced in the next 50 years as in the past 10,000 years combined. Agriculture researchers and farmers are up for the challenge. In 1960, one farmer fed 26 people. Today, one farmer feeds 155. It is time we do all we can to ask about our battery, to ensure it's charged and ready to provide us with a safe, abundant, and affordable food source for many generations to come. Agriculture is the most important part, for agriculture is what makes the world start. Thank you.